talked about, future open chicken blocks. Um, so that includes um, first degree, second degree type 1 and 2, and third degree, which we'll talk about now. So, yep, what I just said. Um, so first degree blocks, then again, there's two types of second degree. There's type 1 and type 2. And then third degree blocks are also called complete heart blocks, which is abbreviated CHB. So with first degree AV blocks, uh, there is a consistent PR interval, but it's going to be greater than 0 0.20 seconds or one large box. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So one thing to keep in mind with AV blocks is they're not a rhythm of their own. It's a abnormality within a rhythm, basically. So you still need to identify the underlying rhythm and then identify that there's an AV block. So this is an example of a first degree block. So the underlying rhythm here is a sinus rhythm, which we know because we have upright P waves that are monomorphic, so they all look the same, they're symmetrical, and they're fairly round. No, they're pretty round, yeah. So this all meets criteria for a sinus rhythm. See the rate is going to be 300, 150, 175. So the heart rate is 75, so that would be a sinus rhythm, normal sinus rhythm. But when we check our intervals, the P wave starting right here, if we count that out to the beginning of the QRS, that's more than one large box or five small boxes. So that would be a long PR interval. So we check each one and we want them to be the same because if they're not, then that's going to be something else. So it is consistent the whole way across. Whoops. It is consistent the whole way across the rhythm. Oh, and down there's the dynamic version of that. So since they're all consistent and it's greater than 0 0.20 seconds, we can call this a normal sinus rhythm with a first degree AV block. So second degree type 1 AV block, there's going to be a varying PR interval. There will still be one P wave for every QRS complex. It'll just be a difference in interval. And then there'll be a, a drop beat or a missing beat, or I shouldn't say a missing beat. There'll be a P wave that doesn't conduct a QRS complex. And there's a pattern to it. So what it does is it'll start out really close to the QRS and then it'll slowly start to get longer and longer and longer then eventually you'll have that drop beat where there will be a P wave but no QRS after it and then once that happens it'll start over with that pattern so say there's three before the drop beat I'll just draw it have something like that then it would be a little bit longer And then there would be an even longer one. And then eventually you would have that and no QRS. And then the pattern would start over like that. So this one right here is basically it's starting over right there. So then there will be another three beats like that. And then there will be that drop beat. So that's the pattern to it. It's um, three beats or three QRS complexes, drop beat, three QRS, drop beat. And that can be different. So sometimes you might have, I don't know, maybe like three like this, or you might have six beats and then the drop beat. So it, it varies, but it will always be that pattern. So if there's six, 
then that means throughout the whole rhythm, you'll see that drop beat every six QRS complexes. And a way that I learned to remember this, um, another name for a first degree AB block is Winky Bach. And that sounds a lot like wink and back. So there's a story to this. Let me prepare for story time. So the P wave and the QRS complex are in a relationship, right? So at first they're close, they're happy, everything's good. But over time, they slowly start to kind of distance from the, each other. Then eventually they break up, which is the drop beat. But then one day they're both in the bar, they see each other, one of them winks and they get back together. So wink and back. But then problems start again, they start to distance, then they break up. Then they go back to the same bar, see each other, wink, and back together. So it's just that pattern of um, distancing and then coming back. So that's just a story I heard for it and it helps me remember it. Um, so this is an example of that. So right there we have our P wave and we can Look at the PR interval here. Oops. So the PR interval right there. And then on this next one, see it gets longer. And it gets much longer. And then right here, drop beat, because there's no QRS. And then we start back over, and there should be three again. And then there's our drop beat. So with this, it is an underlying rhythm of a sinus rhythm. Even though it is a little bit pointy, it can, it's still sinus rhythm. Um, and then we know this is a second degree type one because there's not a consistent PR interval and we have that drop beat right there. So that's all there is to that. Here's the dynamic version. and point out the drop beats. Yep, right there. And that was it. <laughs> All right. So second degree type two AB blocks. Um, there will be a consistent PRI. The only Thing that you'll note is that there's P waves that do not produce a QRX complex. So it's not the same as a type 1 where there's the PR intervals that are slowly getting longer. It's just consistent but then there's just random P waves in there that don't have a QRS with them and that's all there is to second degree type 2. So with this we have right there right there, um, that's all we, oh, and right there. So other than that, if we measure the PRIs, right there, 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 those should all be normal, or they should all be the same as one another. But we have these three random P waves that don't have a QRS, and that's what tells us this is a second degree type two block. And then there's just the dynamic version of that, pretty self-explanatory. So third degree AV blocks, these are a little bit more tricky. Um, so what's happening with these, uh, again, third degree AV block is also called a complete heart block. So what's happening is the atria are firing here, draw a picture. So there's our chambers. 
the atria are firing impulses on their own, but they have no association with the ventricles, so they're acting basically independently of one another. So those are firing, and your ventricles are also firing, but they have no communication between one another. So there will be a PP interval, so P wave to P wave, that will be consistent. And then there will be a QRS interval, which would be the RR interval, that too will be consistent, but they're not functioning as one, they're functioning separately. So that makes it a little tricky to identify um, because it can look like a few different things just depending on where those waves land. So for instance, I'll draw a picture of this, but if I draw in yellow our P waves for this, you have a P wave like that, one there. So the PP interval is normal or it's regular like that, but then we have QRS complexes, which are like this. And the interval for these is also regular, but it's kind of tricky to identify that because it's overall, I guess overall you could say it, it will look like a regular rhythm because you'll be looking at the RR interval, which will be regular but it'll be hard to identify a third degree heart block, at least at first, because we look at these two things and you have to remember that these are gonna be combined. So really what this, I'll draw it down on the bottom one, but what this would look like as the actual rhythm, actually I'll draw it up here in red, it would probably look something like this. And that second P wave, then we'd have, I guess it would kind of be that. So it would look something kind of like that. And the reason for that is that this here, let me see. so on that first QRS since there is this P wave and they're basically just going to be on top of each other um, so if we put these together that's where they would fall those waves so this upslope to the P wave is kind of a little bit before the beginning of the QRS so that's this right here that little notch that would be a P wave and then it's still kind of there at the end, which is like that right there. And then we have an uninterrupted P wave or an unobstructed P wave so we can see it. But then in the second QRS here, there's this P wave starting kind of around in this area. So that causes it to kind of just do that right there. And then we have another P wave going into the last QRS, the QRS, and then this final P wave is after. So here's what I'll do. I'll draw something like this. I'll draw out a third degree block, what it might look like. And then I'll point out or I'll draw in where the P waves are so we can C. Okay, so for this, if we were to draw the P waves in, 
they'd be there and there's one after that one there and there's one there it's just farther down and there then there would be one according to the interval there would be one like in here but it's drowned out in the QRS so you can't see it there's one there one there and then there would actually be one there probably but so that's what's hard about it is you're taking little bits of a wave and you're kind of having to identify it by first if you can see like an actual P wave that doesn't have a QRS or that's not embedded within a QRS if you look at the morphology of it you want to look for that same morphology that might be somewhere in a QRS or something so uh, this one I didn't draw thinking of that so it's not a good example but uh, like if we looked at this P wave or that P wave we'd want to look when we saw this and see if that morphology is the same to the upslope of these ones so it's a little tricky until you have some experience at identifying those but the key thing is once you think that you see a third degree block check the PP interval and see if it appears equal so we'd look from there to there and you do it before but we'd measure that distance and then we'd kind of like if you have something to measure you can put a piece of paper or something over the actual EKG and like draw the top of the P wave then draw at the top of the next P wave and move that piece of paper down and see if it equals out and the P waves are equal distance and then do the same with the QRS and if it is then it's probably a third degree block so here's an example so what we're going to do for this as soon as my mouse starts working there we go we're going to measure these out so let's see it'd be cool if there's like a ruler thing on here but there's not oh well we'll just yeah we'll just draw a line so from here to here that distance right there we would draw this on a piece of paper or something again and then we'd move it over to the next one but we'll just have to visually kind of guess from there to there so does this distance seem equal to that distance yeah so then we would continue to measure them all out that seems the same then here there's probably a P wave but it's lost somewhere in the QRS so we can't see it and actually I think it might be like right on the T wave so I think that it's actually the P wave on the T wave and we'll talk about that in a second but it has to do with the morphology like I was saying earlier so yeah you get the point with that but it's equal PP interval and the QRS's are also regular with their intervals so just to kind of talk about what I mean when I mention the morphology so if we look at this one right here I should actually not draw it like that just circle it if we look at this first and second P wave pay attention to the morphology it's kind of like that so uh, we have one there we have one there but then if we look at erase all this real quick if we look at this third one it's probably right in the T wave and the way we can be sure of that is look at this T wave and then look at this T wave and that one pretty much all of them all the ones that we don't suspect a P wave of being in they have this appearance right here to them or right here so this one that's not the same so that tells us that there's something 
in there that wouldn't normally be in there or that isn't normally in there. So this one, the first one, that's our T-wave morphology. But this one, it has that upslope until like right about here and then it does this, which that right there matches the morphology of our P waves, right? Looks like that, looks like that. So that is what tells us that, that is actually a P wave that's happening on top of the T wave. So then we would measure from there to the next P wave and so on until we measure all the way down and confirm that there's equal distance. So there is probably, and in this one, I'm sorry, uh, the th after the third or during the third QRS complex, that's probably a P wave right there. And it's just the tip of it, like right there, that we're seeing. And that would make sense because see there to there and there to there, that's about an equal distance. And then from there to there, that's also about equal. So that's probably what that is. So whenever you see some weird thing that has P waves and like some weird morphology like this to it, uh, think third degree block and then start getting that PP interval and the QRS interval. And if each of those are equal to themselves, then that's probably a third degree block. But yeah, these can be tricky. And then here's the dynamic cardiology to that. So P wave, P wave, there's a P wave there, 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 there. There's one in here, one in there, boom, boom. I'm just circling the P waves. So yeah, that just takes practice. And final practice and before we get into this final practice, I just want to real quick, because I think I forgot to at the beginning, explain what AV blocks are. So it's not like a heart attack or anything. It's not like a blockage of a vessel. It's only an electrical blockage. So it's atrioventricular, so it's the AV node. There's some sort of blockage in there that's causing a delay and impulses getting through. So when that impulse comes through and it gets to the AV node, there's something that's just causing it to take longer for it to get through, and then eventually it does, unless it's a third degree block, in which case the electricity doesn't go through the AV node at all. So therefore, the atria start firing on their own, and then a ventricular pacemaker will take over and start initiating the beats for the ventricles, and they just don't have any association with one another. But that's all that an AV block is. So, with that being said, let's look at our first rhythm. Is it regular? Uh, no. And next rate. So 300. And so with the regularity thing on this, it's not regular, but it's, I think it would be otherwise. It's just that it's, this right here is kind of interrupting it, but um, so if we did it by the regular regular method of counting for a regular rhythm, it would be 300, 150, 100, 75, 60-ish, a little under 60. Um, but I don't think that's probably accurate. We'll just, we'll do it the other way. Um, or we'll just combine them. So doing it the other way, that we do for an irregular rhythm, it would be 1, 2, 3, 40 beats per minute. I don't think it's quite that slow, so that's why it's like, I don't really want to consider an irregular rhythm, just because then we have to count it that way and the pulse would be way too slow. However, according to counting regularly, it is below 60, so it's like in the 50s somewhere, and then doing it the other way says 40. So we could call this like between 55 and 60-ish. It's not 60, but kind of the high, mid to high 50s. And I think that'd be accurate. So um, 
we then check our intervals, our QRS complex is fine, but our PR interval right here, that's a little long. So that one is about like just under 10 small boxes or two large boxes. Then we have this one. Now that is about 12 or 13 ish. And then this one, that one's almost like 20 small boxes big. And then we have this guy right here with no QRS. And then we have this right here, which is equal. Oh, you can't see it, but it's probably equal to one over there. <laughs> and then it probably starts over with that pattern. So based on that, we could say that this is a sinus bradycardia with a second degree type one AV block. On our second one, is the rhythm regular? Yes. What is our rate? Well, we got 300, 150, whoops, 100, uh, 75, 60, 50, 40, 30-ish. And using the other method to count, it's also 30, so heart rate's about 30, we can say pretty accurately. Um, so that would tell us intrinsically this is at a um, ventricular rate because it's pretty slow. So it's within that ventricular intrinsic rate. Um, and when we look at our intervals, QRS is wide. So that also points towards a ventricular rhythm. However, the weird thing about that is we have P waves, which you would not expect for a ventricular rhythm to be able to see P waves, but we do. So what that tells us is this is probably a third degree block because everything else points to ventricular, but we do have visible P waves, which shouldn't be the case if it were just a purely ventricular rhythm. So just to practice looking for the P waves, I've got one here then the next one that I can see is right here. Again, I determine that by looking at the morphology, which is similar to the other ones. And the other QRSs don't have that same morphology to them. So that tells me there's something in here that isn't normally in there, or it's not part of the T wave. So then we have another P wave there. Got another one right there, one right there, and so one right there. The weird thing about this is this one right here actually kind of looks like a P wave stuck in the T wave, but and the other thing is like it. it like these, this QRS right here does not look like that one. And this does, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's, so I just realized what I think the problem is or what that is, excuse me. <laughs> Ooh. So that probably is actually a P wave and this is probably our dropped beat. So what threw me off there was that the last P wave, there wasn't a QRS, so I thought that this was the dropped beat. But what's important to remember is it doesn't have to start super close. So this right here could very well be the first beat or the first cycle of the pattern. And from there, it just gets longer and longer. So that was confusing because I kind of just assumed that there would be a QRS, but it's probably further down here. And it actually is 
um, the start. So this actually could be our dropped beat right here. And and one thing to check though. Yeah, so, oh, and there's actually a drop beat there too. So this is actually, one, two, hmm. yeah, so this, this one, it gets a little tricky here because we do not have a consistent PR interval. So, it's not a second degree type two AB block. It's not a third degree block, even though, it, I mean, it might be actually, like this is, this is a long QRS. However, the PP interval isn't quite, well, Yeah, hmm. so I would actually probably call this a third degree just because, I mean, it's super weird because that, this P wave right here, or this wave right here, it's not the same as like this one but I guess it's close enough, but it's it's enough that it looks more like these P waves than that T wave. But if that were a P wave from here to there, that kind of messes up that consistent PP interval. But then again, with the YQRS, that's kind of more like a ventricular type thing. And it is a slow rate. So what I would probably say is this is a third degree AB block. At first I was thinking that it was a second degree type one. However, with the ventricular characteristics such as the YQRS and the slow rate with visible P waves, that kind of tells me that that's probably not the case. And I didn't check the interval right away, which I should have, which would have told me that this doesn't make sense because this one right here is super long. This one right here is shorter, which it wouldn't be if it were a second degree type one. Um, and then there's the drop beat right here, or what I thought was a drop beat. So then it should have started over, but it doesn't really. So I think that this is not a P wave now. And with consistent intervals like that and consistent QRSs, this is a third degree AB block. You'll probably see that a lot in future lessons where I start to say one thing and realize halfway through that I'm totally wrong. Um, that's okay, that's learning, folks. So, this top one here, we've got. All right, so let's see. It is, we have probably a regular RR interval. We can't tell because there's only two beats in here. So you would want to print out a longer strip so you could be sure of that. But yeah, this is like 20 beats per minute. So slow. There is, if we look at the intervals, the this QRS doesn't really seem to be wide unless that's like an R wave it might be but it doesn't really seem wide so it's not quite ventricular but it's at a ventricular rate P waves right there right there right there there, there, that's consistent. 
And then, let's see. And it's, yeah, it's hard with just the two, but like, with this one, if we just measure from the beginning of the P wave to there, beginning of the QRS, it is, yeah, it's not the same. So, and it's, so it's not a second degree type two because that PR interval is not consistent. Um, and it's probably not a third degree actually because although the rate is ventricular, the width isn't and you would expect it to be if these were ventricular beats. Well, I mean, they're ventricular, but if they were coming from a ventricular pacemaker, you would expect these to be wider, but yeah. So what is possible is it could be a second degree type one, because again, there's not a specific pattern that has to be like a specific number to the pattern. There just has to be a pattern, so it is possible that there's this one, and then immediately a drop beat, then that one, then immediately a drop beat. So, like this could be the same as this one right here, and then it starts over, and then immediately a drop beat, it starts over, immediately a drop beat, but that would kind of, that would be more consistent with a second degree type 2, but the intervals are kind of close. I don't know why I put these pictures in here that are like hard for me to figure out. <laughs> or I should probably write down somewhere what they actually are so that way I can like pretend like I just was able to figure it out super easy. That would be smart. Yeah. That's just... I... I'm gonna call this one Yeah, we're going to call this one a third degree also. Just because the, the rate is slow. It's not really a wide QRS, but these P waves don't fall exactly where I would expect them to. For it to be a second degree type 2. So we'll call it a third degree. Then the next one, this one. We have QRS there, one there, one there, one there. So with this, if we look at the PR interval, there, 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 that is consistent. So we do have a consistent PR interval. QRS is within normal range, so it doesn't appear to be a ventricular rhythm. The rate is still slow from what we can tell here, but it is irregular, so there's a chance that after what we can see here it is at a higher rate, but according to this, it's like 40. Um, I don't think, well, it could be, but I don't think it's really quite that slow. It's possible, but that doesn't mean it has to be a ventricular rhythm if it's slow. It's just it generally is, but we do have a P wave there there and there that don't generate impulses. There is no start over of a pattern right there after this dropped one or dropped one, so we think. So with a consistent PR interval, but extra P waves that don't conduct QRSs, this one right here would be a second degree type two. And that's what also makes me think that the first one has a third degree because I don't think I would put two of the same rhythms in a row, so. Then this one down here, it actually does look pretty regular. Rate is about 150, 100. There'd be more down here if my head wasn't in the way. So yeah, it's, this is probably a sinus tachycardia, possibly normal sinus. 
Uh, I can't see again with my head in the way. But let me check intervals. QRS is narrow, so it's not coming from the ventricles. P waves are present. We do have one before every QRS, but our PR interval is wide or long. So that tells us that this is a first degree AV block.